Good morning. It's about uh, 9.35 a.m. here my time in glorious Wetucky, Illinois. This will be the part two, you could say, of uh, the video, um, The Birth of Modern Day Propaganda. This will be part two, you could say. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Proverbs chapter 7. We're going to do uh, an expository video a little bit here on Proverbs chapter 7 because it is very meat. And now in the first video, um, the birth of modern propaganda, um, <laughs> incredible evidence was given onto you to show you the birth of the modern propaganda that you and I both are being subject to today. Uh, gets its birth, stems from Roman Catholicism i.e. also um, the Nazis, okay, Joseph Goebbels and that kind of stuff uh, through the propaganda of the Nazi party. And remember, here in America, a lot of those that were in Germany, the Nazi scientists and a lot of Nazis found refuge here in America and started working here in America um, doing things as they were doing in Germany. And uh, in the previous video, which will be in the description box of this, uh, video, um, modern propaganda has its origin and birth in Roman Catholicism, okay? And in this video, we are going to, like I said, we are going to go through uh, Proverbs chapter 7, and we are going to see, first of all, that Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon obviously, and that um, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, is Satan's church. And also, we're going to discuss how to be broken free from the propaganda that you are being subject onto, okay? Because, as in the previous video, a lot of truthers will give you truth, but they will leave out uh, Pointing out to where this comes from, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church, i.e. the Jesuit order. And the true answer, true freedom from propaganda is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is described for you within the authorized version of the scriptures. But, let's begin here. Uh, go to Proverbs chapter 7. We begin reading at verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. So see right away. You are to do what? Keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. See, daily, those of us who are of the church of the living God, we are to strengthen, nourish ourselves in the word, in the scriptures, okay? And how do you discover what truth is? Our Lord Jesus Christ, through the Word, the authorized version of the Scriptures, okay? Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Bind them upon thy fingers, bind them. Bind them what? His words upon thy fingers. Always have the scriptures on you. Always carry a sword with you. Never leave your house unarmed. This is the sword of the Spirit. Have this bound unto your fingers. Always at reach. Always ready. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Having God's word hidden in your heart. Verse 4, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. Job chapter 28, verse 28, of course. Job chapter 28, verse 28. 
And unto man he on unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And we see here in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. The fear of the Lord is often compared unto a woman, a woman whose beauty is extravagant, and a woman whose favor is more precious than rubies, more to be desired than anything, the fear of the Lord. And call understanding thy kinswoman. Also departing from evil. Separating yourself from this. Okay? Through the fear of the Lord. And both are likened unto women. Very interesting. Very interesting. You will often see within the scriptures. That yes, wisdom is compared unto a beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. And understanding thy kinswoman related. See, understanding. Uh, Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Be afraid of the Lord, who has power to put you into hell, okay, whom you have sinned against. That is wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And to depart from evil is understanding. See, when you fear the Lord, you're going to depart from evil. If you don't fear the Lord, you're going to wash your hands in it. Verse 5 in Proverbs chapter 7. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. Hmm, there you go about flattery. Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5. It's easier for me to use two scriptures. Verse 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger, which flattereth with her words. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 3 on to verse 6. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. And hence, verse 6 is really good indication of someone who is false, someone who works for the Vatican. Their ways are movable. It's one thing to be corrected by the brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures, and then to publicly announce, hey, I made a mistake, okay? I repent of it, yada, yada, yada. That's different. Or when the Lord, when you have been teaching or believing something that is uh, actually error, and the Lord convicts you either through a brother or himself through the scriptures, um, and you come out and say, you know, look, I made this error. I taught this. I thought this. I believed this, so on and so forth. The Lord corrected me. That's different, okay? That is different. When you got someone who's a flip-flopper, who is unstable in all his ways, ways are movable. Being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, okay? It's a clear sign that you're dealing with someone who has yokes at least onto the Vatican, or at the very least, is a false convert, an infiltrator, okay? But her ways are always movable. The Catholic Church tells you that her ways have never, that she's never changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know what has really changed with uh, Roman Catholicism, the Catholic Church? Uh, over time, she gets worse. Mm -hmm. Now, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Like I said, a lot of these people who work for the Vatican, their, their ways are movable that you can't know them. They'll make channels and then hide themselves so you can't find them in a search. They'll make, uh, do all kinds of things to hide themselves and then come out to strike. And then once they strike, they fall back and yet hide in the shadows. The ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Verse 6 in Proverbs chapter 7. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement I be, and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding passing through the street near her corner and he went the way to her house. In the, e in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 19. Reading verses 7 on to verse 9 again. And beheld among the simple... Ah, let's read verses 6 on to verse 9. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones I discerned among the youths, the youths, a young man void of understanding. Void of understanding. Not departing from evil, but blending in with things of this world. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 19. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Linked. Verse 8. Note verse 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. What is that? Wisdom. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. See, when you embrace... Her, the fear of the Lord. Departing from evil, understanding, okay? You fear the Lord, you will have understanding. Departing from evil, okay? She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Why will the years of your life be many? Verse 8. Exalt her, what is her? The fear of the Lord, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. What is this sound honor? Verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, the fear of the Lord. Therefore get wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and with all thy getting, get understanding, departing from evil, which is a result of having the fear of the Lord. Okay? Verse 11. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy step shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Again, instruction is likened unto a woman. Something beautiful to behold. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Verse 8 in Proverbs chapter 7, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Verse 15 in Proverbs 4. Avoid it. Pass not by it. 
turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. These coadjutors who work for the Vatican that are here on YouTube and on other platforms and outside your door, they're up at all hours of the night working to see, trying to find leverage against you, trying to find dirt. They come up with schemes at all hours of the night. They do not rest. What does that say? For they sleep not except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. They can't sleep unless they've done mischief. They can't sleep unless they have done evil. You know, you've heard people say, I hope, how do you sleep at night? Meaning, uh, the inference there is that you have a conscience that isn't seared. But people like this, whose conscience is seared with a hot iron, is just the opposite. They can't sleep unless they've done evil. Hence, the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuit order, and those who work for her. For they eat the bread of wickedness, the little wafer cookie, you know, and drink the wine of violence. Look at verse 17 in Proverbs chapter 4, where they eat the bread of wickedness, that little perfectly round sun-shaped cookie, the Baal cookie that Catholics pray to, that Catholics think is actually Jesus Christ. Blasphemy. Okay, it's wickedness. And what does it say? For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. You know, at the Mass, they have the wafer cookie, and they have the chalice filled with wine, where the Jesuit priest does the abracadabra hocus-pocus and turns the cookie into the flesh, and all that's supposed to be Jesus, and the wine is supposed to be his blood through transubstantiation. Yeah, don't miss verse 17, people. Don't miss that. I believe wholeheartedly is a direct reference onto the Roman Catholic Church, even way back then. Because remember, Roman Catholicism is Baal worship on steroids. You read in the book of Jeremiah how uh, after uh, Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped Jeremiah and were taking people captive, and um, they uh, they went back. Uh, they went down to Egypt because they killed. Uh, um, Ishmael, and were afraid of Nebuchadnezzar. When they were in Egypt, they kept making cakes unto the Queen of Heaven, the modern Mary of Catholicism, okay? So see, Baalite religion has been there all along. Today, the Baalite religion is Roman Catholicism. With their blasphemous, satanic little wafer cookie and the wine that their Jesuit priest does priestcraft magic and turns the cookie into flesh and the wine into blood. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. Verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Verse 9 in Proverbs 7, In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Verse 19 in Proverbs 4, The way of the wicked is, is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And note here in Proverbs chapter 7, In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Who comes out to meet this uh, young man or this young person? Yeah. Verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Ooh, harlots. How do harlots dress? 
Look, look outside your door and your window in the warm weather. You see the, the women nowadays dressed in things that only husbands ought to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Now we have looked at so far how wisdom is likened unto a beautiful woman. But here a woman who in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him, met him, a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Met this man in the twilight and the evening. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, dressed like an harlot, dressed like the world. And subtle of heart. Go to Nahum, chapter 3. Covered this in a video before, but now we're blending them together so you can see. So you can see. Okay? Nahum chapter 3. Come on, fingers, work with me. Nahum chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 7. Now, you gotta remember, as I've stated in a, a previous video. Specifically, the book of Nahum is referring on to the city of Nineveh. Okay, Nineveh. But to instruct us, and about here in verse 10, a woman with the attire of an harlot. Woe to the bloody city. The bloody city. Don't worry, we'll... We'll look uh, a little bit deeper into this. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. And there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses. And there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Hmm. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. Hmm. The mistress of witchcrafts. Hmm that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face and will shew the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock. And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? When shall I seek comforters for thee? Now, again, this is talking specifically about Nineveh. But when in comparison to Babylon, mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, Revelation chapter 17 Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 under verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying, Come, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters sitteth upon many waters. And uh, the many waters are, uh, the many waters are people. Where is that? Uh, verse 15 in Revelation chapter 17. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Verse 1 again in Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay? 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Hmm. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten, uh, ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. When you see the bishops and cardinals, purple and scarlet are prevalent. People like to argue and say, well, no, the colors of the papacy are gold and white. But look at the cardinals and bishops. The colors are purple and scarlet. Rome's colors are purple and scarlet. The white and the gold are merely a distraction. The scriptures tell us that her colors, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, just like the priests, uh, like the uh, cardinals and bishops, and decked with gold, look at all the gold that's involved in the Vatican, and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Clearly talking about the Roman Catholic Church. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism refers to the church as mother, one system referring to herself as mother. People. Verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Drunken with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Those of you willfully ignorant out there, deceived by the Jesuit propaganda that you're being fed, you will say something like, well, it's the Jews. No. Drunken with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus? It's America. No. It's Roman Catholicism. See, that history that still is of what Roman Catholicism is, is drenched in the blood of the saints, people. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. There's a PDF on the channel here that you can do so. Look at the Inquisitions. Millions, I say billions, have been murdered by the Roman Catholic Church. Drunk with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Let's continue. Verses 11 and 12. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Now, in the previous vi uh, video, it talks about how um, the congregation for the propagation of the faith for foreign missions, okay, spreading the gospel of the Roman Catholic Church, which is uh, uh, totally works with no assurance of salvation because there is no salvation in the Catholic Church, okay? Look at this. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abideth not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Every single church building here in America is tied to the Vatican, is yoked up with the Vatican in one way or another, whether it be through the 501c3 yoke imposed on them by the Jesuits through Lyndon Baines Johnson, whether they teach the ecumenical love gospel, the satanic Jesuitical just believe, easy believism gospel, all the church buildings here in America, and your nation too, are all yoked up with the Vatican. 
Roman Catholicism is everywhere. She is loud and stubborn. Yeah, loud and stubborn. Her ways are movable to fit in like a snake. Yes, but she is loud, always with a, a big voice, you know, with all these Christians, okay? And stubborn. She doesn't change, only she gets worse in time. Her feet abide not in her house, always on foreign missions, trying to spread the doctrine of the Jesuits. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18, verse 7. Just one verse. Revelation 18, verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I am a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Now go to Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah chapter 47. Pay attention, remember Re Revelation 18. And um, uh, Revelation 18 and Isaiah 47. Remember that. Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah chapter 47 verses 7 and 8. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. Neither didst remember the latter end of it. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Mm. That's the heart of Roman Catholicism says in her heart, I am. I said a queen. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Verse 13. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, verse 13, uh, go to Proverbs 27, Proverbs 27, very quickly, Proverbs 27, one verse, verse 6, Proverbs 27, verse 6, look at verse 13 again, so she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Roman Catholicism is your enemy, people. Verse 14. On to verse 18. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. Fine linen of Egypt. Fine linen from the world. Covered in the covering of the world. Hmm. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come. Let us take our fill of love into the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 23 on to verse 26. 
For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman, Roman Catholicism, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Hmm. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 15. Therefore came I forth to meet thee. Verse 12. And I'm Proverbs chapter 7. Verse 12. And lieth and wait at every corner. Verse 15. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. Oh, I've come for you. I want you. See? Verse 25. People. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Oh, doesn't the Roman Catholic Church look so beautiful on the outside, huh? Don't their Jesuit priests with their dog collars look so dignified, so knowledgeable, right? Don't their churches look beautiful, ornate? Doesn't Francis himself decked out with gold and silver and that kind of stuff? Doesn't he just look so precious? Doesn't sin look so beautiful to you? Hmm? What's the warning? Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Because remember, verse 10. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold... There met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart, dressed as the world. Who is this harlot? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Mm -hmm. Verse 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. See, when Roman Catholicism takes you with her eyes, when you are captivated by all her false teaching, you're likened on to a man is brought to a piece of bread, as if you're a dog. You know how you take a treat in your hand and go to a dog? Come here, Pooch. Come here. Like with Zena, my dog, Zena. I'll have like a goodie. He's like, come here, Zena. Come here, Zena. Come here, come here. Roman Catholicism is just that. She takes you. With her beauty, she takes you with her eyelids. She she comes on to you, subtlety and subtlety, flaunting herself because she says the world. See, yeah, yeah. Now go to Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight. This is important. Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight. Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight. Verses 12 on to verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 28. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus sat the Lord God, thou sealest, sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You might be saying, well, he's talking about the king of Tyrus. Wait a second. Thou hast been in the garden, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Was Tyrus in the garden of Eden? No. Who were in the garden of Eden? Four. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. How does a voice walk, by the way? I'll let you wrestle with that. Adam and Eve, and there was another that was there. That old serpent, the devil, Satan. Satan is the one being addressed here. Well, he's talking to Tyrus. Yes, he mentions Tyrus in verse 12. He does. But who is in control of Tyrus? Who is ultimately pulling the strings for Tyrus? Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, 
and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Satan is a created being. Satan is not omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. He is a created being. He is the anointed cherub. But note in verse 13, every precious stone was thy covering. Verse 16, on to verse 18 in Proverbs chapter 7. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. Well, it doesn't say anything about stones there, Brad. I, I know that. I know that. The point is this. Let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Trying to get him into bed with her, the harlot. Why? Being made to look so beautiful with the attire of an harlot. Adorned, every precious stone was thy covering. Made to look beautiful. Yes, it doesn't talk about stones there, but the point is that this harlot was making this sin, this evil, laying with her to look beautiful, to look so attractive. That's how sin is. Satan makes sin look to you so beautiful, so attractive. And where it says here, every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy, uh, the workmanship, uh, and gold, excuse me, the workmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Look at that. Look at that verse again. Okay. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy Pipes, wind instruments, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So this harlot here in Proverbs chapter 7, she has, uh, what, in verse 17, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamons. Okay. Verse 16, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. Verse 13, so she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes. Tabrets, pipes, music, wind instruments. Okay? Okay with her fair speech. We'll look at that here in a little bit, okay? The workings of Satan, how Satan operates. Do you see that? Let's continue in uh, Ezekiel chapter 28 at verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from that from the day that thou was created. Again, showing you, proving to you that Satan is a created being. Till iniquity was found in thee. What was the iniquity in Satan? Hmm? I'll show you. Hold your place here. Go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? What does Lucifer mean? Son of the morning. Not morning star. 
Morning Star is attributed as a title unto Jesus. You read in the Bible, not the scriptures. It says Morning Star there. That's blasphemy. The Bible that you are reading is saying this is Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 uh. It's Lucifer, not Jesus. Okay? Lucifer. O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Five I wills. Five the number of death. Yet, Thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. That's pride. That's pride. That's being proud. Okay? S uh, the sin of Satan, the sin of Lucifer that got him, that made him fall from heaven, was pride. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Look at the Roman Catholic Church. Nothing but pride. Adorned with every precious stone. Gold. Pearls, costly array. Let's continue in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee. Satan's ultimate end is to be cast into the lake of fire with all of you who follow him and all of you who are not saved. O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom, fear the Lord, by reason of thy brightness. All those stones... How bright? Sin is made to look oh so bright unto you. Oh so beautiful. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Pride. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. Fire from the midst of thee. Oh, kind of like a dragon, which is referenced in uh, Job chapter 41. Read that on your own time, okay? It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold that behold thee. Yeah. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Okay, now go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Not 1 Corinthians, Brad. 2 Corinthians. For, uh, chapter 11, excuse me. Excuse me. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. On to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Just like a lot of all that Catholicism does. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Ministers of righteousness. Such as Jesuit priests. They look so holy, don't they? But this is not just relegated to those of the realm of the religious spectrum. Okay? Look at the doctors today who work for the Vatican. Look at the politicians who are in the, 
the pocket of the Vatican. Okay? Ministers of righteousness. Sin is made to look oh so bright and beautiful unto you. Why? Because uh, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. With all those stones, he was the anointed cherub. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. Back in Proverbs chapter 7, verses 14 on to verse 18 again, with what we just looked at. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee. Minister of Righteousness. Diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee. Why? Because, uh, what is this? And um, verse 12. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. With carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Also, too, indicative to the propaganda that you are being subject unto. Think about it. With what the wicked things that are flashed before your eyes, with the flashing lights and the use of circles and the binaural beats, sin is made to look so beautiful, isn't it? grovel for it, don't you? Yeah, you sure do. Now, verses 19 on to verse 20 in Proverbs chapter 7. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Amen, he will. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Proverbs chapter 26. See how we did that? Proverbs chapter 26. Come on. See how we did that? Verses 27 on to verse 33. Proverbs 26. Beg your pardon one second here, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Proverbs 6, not 26, okay? Proverbs 6, not 26. We had already read in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 23 on to verse 26. Go now to Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 27 on to verse 33. Looking again in Proverbs chapter 7, verses 19 and 20. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Proverbs chapter 20, uh, Pro Proverbs chapter 6. See how he did that? Verses 27 on to verse 33. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. Lacketh understanding. The fear of the Lord and departing from evil. Okay? He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Now, you have an affair with a married woman, or you're a married woman, have an affair with a married man, or whatever. Okay? Yes, yes, that is, what does it say there? A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. The Lord can and will forgive you adultery today in this dispensation. But for what we are looking at, you go ahead and mingle yourself with this harlot in Proverbs chapter 7, Mystery Babylon the Great, 
the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? You go ahead and mingle yourself with this harlot. You commit adultery on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, if you are saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God. But you go on, you go in onto this harlot, Roman Catholicism, you fall for her kisses, you fall for her propaganda. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Got to be careful about going to the Vatican, people. Remember, the Vatican, the Catholics, they're Christians. They're not of the Church of the Living God. Remember that, okay? Now, verse 21 here in Proverbs chapter 7. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips she forced him Colossians chapter 2 one verse Colossians chapter 2 Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Perfectly sums up the Jesuits. And they're, what they call them moral theologians. That's what they call themselves. Moral theologians. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But see, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. They come up to you and it's like, wouldn't you want to be part of the church that Christ founded? Don't you want to be amongst the strongest of all? There are millions, millions of us. These people who, who hold to this King James version of the scriptures, who are they? Come with us. Come with us. We can give you pardon. We can make you belong to the greatest God's church. See? And then you look into the the doctrines of the Jesuits about how what they teach they teach you how you can break every single one of God's commandments and get away with it with their much fair speech okay go to Psalm 55 one verse also Psalm 55 Psalm 55 Psalm 55, one verse, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Says her, says he. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mother Church, according to Roman Catholicism. Okay? Now go to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Romans. Come on, fingers work with me. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, their own flesh. And by good words 
and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Oh, what is this? Go back to Proverbs chapter 7. Oh, verse 7. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, the youths, a young man void of understanding, void of departing from evil. No fear of the Lord, no wisdom there. And by good words and fair speeches, verse 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Verse 19 in Romans chapter 16. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good. Wise. What is being wise? Having wisdom. Fearing the Lord. And simple concerning evil. Simple concerning evil. If it's against the scriptures, it's evil. How simple is that? How simple is that? Be simple concerning evil. Okay? Verse 20. And the grace and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Look at Roman Catholicism. Nothing but confidence in the flesh. Confidence in the flesh. Their little wafer cookie. Their little uh, wafer god that they eat. Confidence in the flesh. Look at their. Look at our big buildings. Look at how many people we have. They're dogs. Beware. And look at the propaganda that they are instilling upon you. All the flesh that they give. Look at it. Look at it for what it is. Mind control. Meant to keep you docile. Meant to bring you under the eventual yoke of Roman Catholicism. Think about that, okay? And while we're here in Philippians chapter 3, look at verses 18 and verse 19. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, just like Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholics are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, flesh, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Who mind earthly things. Look at the propaganda that the Jesuits are pumping onto you people. Look at it for what it really is. Okay? Yes, look at it for what it really is. Watch the previous video. Okay? Meant to keep you in sin, to keep you in bondage, to keep you null and void, to keep you doped up, to keep you passive. And also to get you aggravated and irritated against those who are of the church of the living God and those who truly want to warn you and make you aware of the truth. Through propaganda, Roman Catholicism has a majority of you in her spell. True priestcraft, true magic. They are enemies of the cross of Christ, dear people. Now, let's read verses, uh, let's keep reading now. In Proverbs chapter 20, uh, in Proverbs chapter 7, beg your pardon. 
Let's continue now at verse 22. He goeth after her straightway. Why does he go after her straightway? Why? Verse 7. And uh, verse 6 and 7. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Void of understanding. Having no fear of the Lord. Verse 3. Uh, verse 5. That they may keep you, keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. What is this? Verse 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. See? See the contrast there? Fear the Lord liken unto a woman, but then you have the mother of harlots coming on to you, wanting to uh, replace that fear of the Lord with things of the flesh, with things of the world. And because you are void of understanding, departing of evil, because you have not the fear of the Lord, he goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool, who says in his heart there is no God, to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasted to the snare, and knoweth not, that it is for his life. Because you are taken. You're taken. See. <laughs> You're taken in that snare. You're taken in the snare of the devil. Through propaganda. Through the lights. The glamour. The glitz. The fashion uh, show. The uh, passion play. That is Roman Catholicism. That is given to you on your news. In your movies. In your video games. Your music. Verse 24, now to the close of the chapter. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, Many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell. You know, their church buildings, the Roman Catholic church buildings, yeah. Church buildings in general. Going down to the chambers of death. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs, chapter 1. Thank you, pardon, brethren. Come on, fingers, work with me. There we go. Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 23. Proverbs, chapter 1. Ah, you know what? Let's read verses 15 on to verse 23. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Verse 20, check this out. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Look at, look at this. Look at this, okay? Verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Wisdom. Here again. Likened unto a woman, a beautiful woman. But here in uh, Proverbs chapter 7. Uh... Verses 9 on to verse 12. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the, with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. But here we see, wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Verse 21. She crieth in the chief place of con concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying, 
See, the harlot was able to take this young man because he was void of understanding. And to be void of understanding, departing from evil, okay, is lacking the fear of the Lord. Many people can depart from evil, but is that due to fear of the Lord? To truly depart from evil, you need the fear of the Lord, okay? Because what is evil? What you decide or what our Lord decides, see? That's why you need the fear of the Lord. If you don't have the fear of the Lord, what is evil? What you decide, remember what Satan said unto Eve? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? You see? Let's continue here in Proverbs. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools who say in their heart there is no God hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Turn you at my reproof, it says. Turn, repent at my reproof. Okay? Now, Proverbs chapter 2. This is your answer, okay? To propaganda. To being taken by the harlot, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and the Jesuit order. Here's your answer. My son, if thou wilt receive my words, Proverbs chapter 2, and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. If thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And apply thine heart to understanding, departing from evil. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seek her, there you go again, as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The Lord giveth wisdom. The Lord giveth fear. Oh, yeah. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge, knowing and understanding, departing from evil. See, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, having contrition, godly sorrow, because it's your fault he died because of what you've done, and in fear of the Lord because he, ha he can send you to hell and will send you to hell unless he saves you, you call upon his name, cry out to him for his mercy, and he save you. May he save you, okay? For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. See, when the Lord come into you, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. And what, is it, what does it say here? Verse 5, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. God within you. Say, don't look at that. Don't touch that. Don't eat that. See those people? Stay away from them. You know that guy you've known for many, many, many years? I don't want you to buy him. Get away from him. Why? Because he's going to bring you into sin. See, God within you will lead you and guide you through the scriptures. He will teach you what is good. See, you trying to depart from evil, trying to have understanding, devoid of God. What's good to you? What you decide? No. There's none good but one. That is God. And he tells you what is good in the scriptures. And to depart from evil is understanding. You need the fear of the Lord. Many people out there can to depart from evil. Yes, they can. But what is evil? 
What do they call evil? See, what you call evil, what God calls evil, I can guarantee you, are two different things. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 8. He keepeth the paths of judgment, oh boy, and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity and every good path. When wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is in you. When the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself, is in you. He will lead you, guide you into all truth. Okay? See, with the Lord, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. See, the propaganda that you're receiving, Satan, through Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, Satan is telling you, through mind control, what is good. And what is good unto Satan and the world? Steal of the Jesuit poniard. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be saved. <coughs> Verse 10 in Proverbs 2. When wisdom, the fear of the Lord, entereth into thine heart, and knowledge knowing is pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding departing from evil shall keep thee. Boop. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. Ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Look at this. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Like the harlot in Proverbs chapter 7 here which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death and her pass unto the dead. There is no life in the Roman Catholic Church. It's only death. It's only death. None that go on to her return again. Neither take they hold of the paths of life. That right there, there, buddy. A strict, stern warning. Stay away from Roman Catholicism and all her daughters. Stay away from Christianity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on his terms. That he save you. And you become of the church of the living God, not a Christian. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men, like the apostles before us, the martyrs, the true martyrs of the church of the living God. And keep the paths of the righteous, for the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. Perfect, those who are perfect in heart toward the Lord. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 7 on to verse 13. Hear me now, therefore, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her. <laughs> and come not nigh the door of her house. Why? Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. 
And they are cruel. You study anything of the Jesuit order. Cruelty. Nothing but cruelty. The history of Roman Catholicism, which they want to erase, but they can't. Cruelty. Nothing but cruelty. Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. Yeah, they talk to you about tithing, right? Give to the church. Yeah, yeah. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof. Oh, if only I had done this. Oh, if only I had hearkened. See, right now, right now, you're being warned. You're being warned. You're being admonished. Okay? The, the propaganda and everything that you are being uh, fed today, dear friend, comes to you from Roman Catholicism. Okay? All roads lead to Rome when it comes to this evil world. Okay? Repent. Go not in it. What, 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 what does it say? What does it say? Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh near the door of her house. Your only answer is Jesus Christ. Your only answer, turning off the television. Stepping away from the computer. Okay? Turning off the radio. Going to our Lord Jesus Christ on his conditions. Okay? Because there's going to come a time where it's going to be too late for you. See, what's going to happen is we, the church of the living God, are going to be redeemed, caught up, resurrected before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And once we, the church of the living God, are taken out of here, you don't come to the Lord today broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name and that he may save you. We get caught up. This dispensation ends, dear friend, and hence begins the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works. You take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. Don't believe John MacArthur. Don't believe Kent Helvend. Don't believe Robert Breaker, Gene Kim. These guys who say you can take it out of your hand or cut it off or gouge it. No, 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 no. No, they're working for the Vatican. You don't want to get to a point where it's too late. Today it's not too late. Verse, let's, let's read verse 11 again. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Did I read too much here? Yes, I did. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. You fall for all of this, you're in all evil. You are in all evil, dear friend. Now go to Isaiah chapter 47. See that? Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah chapter 47, picking up at verse 9. See how he did that? Isaiah chapter 47, verse 9, on to the close of the chapter in Isaiah chapter 47. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection, for the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments making reference future prophecy to the destruction of Roman Catholicism. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. 
Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Roman Catholicism tells you there is no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church. That's what they teach. They, she says, I am, and none beside me. See, to be antichrist is to replace and also to be against. Don't forget that. Okay, let's continue. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored for thy youth, from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Doesn't, doesn't all this information that you're getting from TV and all that stuff, doesn't it weary you? Doesn't it wear you out? See, when you read the authorized version of the scriptures daily, you know, examining, examining yourself in light of scripture, it's a refreshing. It satisfies your soul. It satisfies you, okay? Why? Because you have the Lord in you if you are saved and reading his word and he guides you into all truth. The stuff that you get out there, man, doesn't that weary you? Doesn't that wear you out, huh? Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored. Even thy merchants from thy youth, they shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. And, and, okay, and, Revelation chapter 18. Yeah, see that? See that? Revelation chapter 18. Beg your pardon, brethren. Sorry about that. Revelation 18, verses 8. On to verse 19. Revelation 18, verses 8. On to verse 19. Talking about the destruction of Roman Catholicism again. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall utterly be and she, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas. Alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thion wood and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble. Hmm. All are likened unto Roman Catholicism. All the riches that she has. Look at verse 13. And cinnamon. Ooh, you mean, what is that where she says in uh, Proverbs chapter 7? Um... Verse 17, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Hmm. Verse 13 in Revelation 18. And cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. 
and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, finally destroys Roman Catholicism. Praise the Lord. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, <laughs> that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet. Note the mention of purple and scarlet. Okay? And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, just like the anointed, anointed cherub that covereth, Lucifer, as de uh, defined in Ezekiel chapter 28. See, Lucifer was uh, covered with every precious stones and with the vo uh, sound of his tabrets and pipes, you know, speaking smooth things, you know, spoiling people through philosophy, through CCM and their enchant enchanting music, binaural beats, and the visuals that you see via uh, propaganda and mind control. And saying, alas, alas, that great city, Roman Catholicism, the Vatican, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. Everything that Roman Catholicism is working for, to bring in that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? To rule the volition, to rule the world by the volition of a single man, all of what they have been working for for centuries. For in one hour, so great, for in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster, and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? That city being referenced is not Jerusalem. Not America, obviously. But, okay? If, by the way, if anyone tells you that Mystery Babylon is America... Get away from them. They are working for the Vatican. Okay? You read Revelation chapter 17 in its entirety. It's talking about Rome, Vatican City. The Vatican is that city being referenced. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 18. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Verse 19. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. Got to read verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God hath avenged you on her. And that's, the, and that's the beauty of it. That is the ultimate beauty of it, dear friend. For all the murder, for all the genocide that Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, has inflicted upon the Church of the Living God and upon man in general, they're going to pay for it. You're a Catholic, you're on the losing side. You're going to go down on that Titanic. And you, you're, you're not saved, you're lost. Watching your television, playing your video games, watching news, listening to the satanic music, you're hooked. You're hooked. As in the previous video, propaganda that you are in, uh, being engulfed in stems from Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism.
and her army the Jesuit order. But I want to show you an example now. I want to show you an example of propaganda within the scriptures. Someone utilizing a form of propaganda in the scriptures. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 15. 2 Samuel chapter 15. 2 Samuel chapter 15. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 15 verses 1 on to verse 12. Talking about Absalom, the son of David. Okay? Get a load of this. Now, in the previous video, we go through the dictatorial definition of, of propaganda. Okay? And to propagate. And stuff like that. Look at this. 2 Samuel 15, verses 1 on to verse 12. And it came to pass after this, that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so, that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. See, these people were to go to the king for judgment. But Absalom interceded with flattery. Of what city art thou? Where are you from, man? Eh? Being all friendly, cordial. Beware. With, the, uh, with her fair speech caused him to yield. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right. Flattery. But there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Verse 4. Absalom said moreover, Oh! that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so, that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, bow down to him, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, here, we'll, we'll hold, your, hold your place here. Go back now to Proverbs chapter 7. Huh? Go back to Proverbs chapter 7. Look at this. Come on. Come on, go with me. Come on. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips... She forced him. Verse 6 in 2 Samuel chapter 15. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Stole them. Verse 7. And it came to pass after 40 years, denoting the age of Solomon, of, of Absalom, excuse me, the age of Solomon, okay? It was, uh, uh, he was over 40 years old, obviously, okay? But uh, I, I've, I've addressed this in a video before, but, and it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. Proverbs chapter 7. <clears throat> verse 14 uh, verse 13 and 14 so she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him I have peace offerings with me this day have I paid my vows verse 8 in 2 Samuel 15 for thy servant vowed a vow when I abode at Geshur in Syria saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then, will, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. 
So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gileonite, David's counselor, for his sit from his city, and from Gilon, Gilo, excuse me, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong. Conspiracy was strong. For the people increased continually with Absalom. So he sent people to go ahead of him to say, Absalom reigneth. And he stole the hearts of the people with flattery to turn them against the king. The propaganda that you receive today, that you are hearing today, to turn your hearts against who? The king, our Lord Jesus Christ and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures, to keep you in sin. And through propaganda, through the media, Satan is making you, making himself look onto you so sweet, so innocent, so peaceful, lustful. It's not Satan. Uh, sin is of Satan, by the way, my friend. And through the media, what is evil is good, and what is good is evil. Sin is being dressed up to look oh so sweet for you. This is a wonderful uh, example of propaganda in the scriptures about how Absalom used conniving, ter uh, conniving methods. Okay? People going before him to say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. Okay, what does it say here? But Absalom, verse 10, But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear, as soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then shall ye say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron? So Absalom, doing, doing this, similar to what the Jesuits are doing unto you today through propaganda. Isn't that something, huh? Isn't that something? And of course, Absalom was not of the Lord. He was ordained for judgment against David for his sin... With Bathsheba, yes, but ultimately, Absalom met his end. He's not in heaven. There's no way. There's no way. Go now to Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 23 on to verse 31. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey. And it's, as it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, that Satan himself walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour? They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things, like the Jesuits have stole all the uh, wealth of America, and it's in their coffers. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated the law, violated my law, and have profaned my holy things, mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shewed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get this honest gain. And her prophets 
have daubed them with the untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Verse 30 on to verse 31. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. See, Abraham acted as an intercessor on the behalf of Lot, of course, with uh, when the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But he acted as an intercessor. Moses acted as an intercessor when our Lord wanted to uh, do away with his own people. He wanted uh, Moses to act as an intercessor. The Lord knew that he would do that. But see, that's what the Lord wants. He wants people to what? Stand in the gap to make intercession. See, the church of the living God, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. What's keeping that man of sin, the son of perdition, from being manifest, from being revealed? The church of the living God, we, the body of Christ that are on the earth, once we be taken out of the way, and then that wicked shall be revealed. Who is that? That man of sin, the son of perdition. Look at this verse again. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. How many of us of the church of the living God are standing in the gap making intercession? There are many of us, yes. But what happens when he finds no man? Scary thought. Verse 31. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Again, once we, the church of the living God, get redeemed, caught up, you will left behind, you're going to have to deal specifically with Roman Catholicism. Extreme Roman Catholicism, because they are going to be openly in control. And see, all the propaganda and all the mind control and everything you're being fed is preparing you for. The steal of the Jesuit poniard and all that stuff. The murder on the face mask. Okay? It's all to prepare you for the mark of the beast. It's all to prepare you for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Now go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, chapter 2. 2 Peter, chapter 2. 2 Peter, chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 19. Talking about the people who are feeding you the propaganda. The ones who are behind the propaganda are the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Satan. Okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 19. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried away with the tempest, whose ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For while they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Those that were clean saved escaped from them who lived in error. But look at that. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, huh? Huh, yeah? Great swelling words of vanity? Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, 
Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Huh? <laughs> After the tradition of men, remember, Catholics elevate tradition well over scripture, okay? After the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Verse 19 in 2 Peter chapter 2. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought Look at that verse. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. Are you overcome with the news, with the movies, with television shows, with video games, with these things of the world? For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. Romans chapter 6, just one verse, Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? See, Bibles take servants and put slaves. People, people listen to me, listen to me. God is not forcing you to do anything at gunpoint. You have free will to choose. You are not being forced. Satan is not forcing you at gunpoint to do anything either. So you are choosing. You are choosing this. Know ye not, uh, Romans 6 verse 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Whoop, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 22 under verse 26. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A pure heart for the Lord is one that is broken and contrite and fears the Lord. Many out there say that they are Christians, but they're not of the church of the living God. A pure heart is broken, contrite, having godly sorrow, and fears the Lord. And it says, flee also youthful lusts. Doesn't it seem odd that everything that you see on TV, in advertising, in television shows, are geared toward the youth? Hmm? Thin is in, youth is king. That's evolutionary mindset right there for you people. Mm -hmm. And you're told here to flee youthful lusts. Because look at the propaganda that's being uh, pushed on you. Especially with the sexuality, the erotomania being pushed on you. With the women basically naked. And the men wearing things so tight. Yeah, same with the women. Verse 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. It's you lost people. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil 
who are taken captive by him at his own will. As I said in the video yesterday, America is the mob. Conjure magic for us and we'll be distracted. Yeah. Take away our freedom and instill our sports, our movies, our video games, our music, our drugs and alcohol, our pornography. The Jesuits will give you death. And you will love them for it. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. You're snared by it. Who are taken captive by him at his will. Because he, see, he gives you the illusion through television, through propaganda, through media, through the news, whatever, gives you the illusion that you have a good life, that things are getting better. Yeah. Go to Acts chapter 26. How do you get out of all this then, okay? You might be saying, okay, Brad, okay, I get it. I get it about propaganda. I get it. Okay? Sure. Yeah, the Jesuits, Roman Catholicism. Okay. So what? Now what? Acts chapter 26, verses 15 on to verse 18. This is Saul, Paul, uh, giving a rundown about how he saw the Lord on the way on the Damascus Road on what our Lord Jesus said to him. Okay? Acts chapter 26, verses 15 on to verse 18. Let's read uh, verse 14. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's read verses 12 on to verse 18. Beg your pardon. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou? Or? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. You might be saying, how did Saul, Paul, how did Saul persecute Jesus? See, when the Lord saves you, you are part of his bones and his flesh. You are part of the body of Christ, the church of the living God. So when you lost people and the Jesuits attack us who are of the church of the living God, you are actually attacking Jesus Christ because we are his representative, representatives. We are ambassadors for Christ. Okay, We are in the ministry of reconciliation and we have the word of reconciliation. Okay, And you attack us, you're attacking the Lord. Okay, Verse 16, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Look at that verse specifically. To open your eyes. See Satan in the Garden of Eden. What, is he, what did he say? Disobey God, eat the fruit, and your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When it is God who ultimately knows what is good and what is evil. 
How do I know that? Because he's told me so. He's told you so in the scriptures. But see, Satan's temptation on the Eve. Disobey. Eat the fruit. Your eyes will be open. You'll be able to see. Satan's trick. Satan's lie. Satan's thing. Disobey God. And you'll see. Right? What do you atheists uh, claim to have your eyes open that you see now, right? Those of you <laughs> who were once Christians. <laughs> oh, now I see. You were, never, you were never of the church of the living God in the first place. But see, the Lord here says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. See, the power of Satan snared, taken by him at his own will. And he's doing it through the propaganda that you're being fed, through the Roman Catholic Church, through the Jesuit order, through the politics, you name it. See the answer. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This condition, though. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Isaiah chapter 31. See, the Lord, our Father, our God, Jesus Christ, who is the Father, would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants everyone to be saved. Not everybody is going to be saved because God has a condition for his salvation. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to have godly sorrow. And being broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow will produce the fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay, And fearing the Lord who can send you to hell that's going to cause you to call upon his name. It's not a one, two, three thing. It happens in one fell swoop. When you are broken of yourself. Okay? But Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31. Come on, fingers. See, our Lord would want wants you... To get away from all this and come to him on his terms broken and contrite. And in fear of him, call upon his name and ask him to save you. There are those out there who dispute about the asking, uh, calling upon the name of the Lord and uh, being broken and contrition. They're liars. They work for the Jesuit order. Okay, or Jesuits themselves. Here's what the Lord says about those who go to the world who fall for the propaganda and stuff that you're receiving from Satan. Uh, Isaiah chapter 31, verses 1 on to verse 3. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, says Egypt. Yes, but in type, it's a type of the world. And stay on horses and trusting chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. Roman Catholicism says, hey, we have, look at how many we are. They're of the world. <laughs> but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Seek the Lord, dear people. Yet, 
he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians, those of the world, are men, flesh, and not God. And their horses, flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. See, misery loves company. You yoke yourself up with the Vatican, Satan. He can give you things pertaining to this life, yes. He can give you all your sinful, lustful desires. But in the end, both of you are going to fall. You're going to fail. And our Lord even warns about this, about those of you who decide to go to the world, to Satan, to Roman Catholicism and the Jesuits, instead of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord even says this of you, uh, Matthew chapter 23, verses 34 on to verse 39. Matthew chapter 23, verses 34 on to verse 39. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues. And persecute them from city to city. See, Matthew chapter 23 is talking about the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble, which Matthew chapter 24 is talking about, okay? Matthew chapter 24, okay? The time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. It's the time of Israel's trouble. And Matthew chapter 23 is talking about the time, the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble which we are in right now. We are in the end times for the uh, catching away. That upon you may come, uh, may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are, which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? And ye would not. Again, God's not forcing you. Neither is the devil. You've got to remember that. Okay? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. See, in verse 37, Granted, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctrinally, this is under the uh, under law in the Old Testament, okay? Because the New Testament begins with the death of the testator. Read Hebrews chapter 9, okay? But see what our Lord is saying for our instruction in righteousness. For you to instruct you in some righteousness here. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets... You won't hear. And stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings? And ye would not. Our Lord's there. The sacrifice for sins have been made. He's, he's sending people to warn you. Hi. But not at gunpoint. Not by force. Uh, 
Our Lord would much rather be merciful because he delighteth in mercy. But if you reject him, you're a child of wrath and his love is not for you. You are his enemy. Hence, he hates you. <gasps> yeah. Remember, dear friend, John 3, 16. God so loved past tense that he gave past tense. God's love is at the cross. Go there on his terms. Go there on his terms. But a majority of you, and you would not. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Want to break free from all this? Hmm? John chapter 8. Verses 30. Under verse 36. And he spake these words, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, conditional clause, if. Many, many claim to believe in Jesus. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble, James 2.19. And remember, the Catholics teach you a trinity. One God consisting of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body, by the way. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. God has a spirit, soul, and body, okay? But many claim to believe on him. Look at verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye dis my disciples indeed. If. If you are truly converted. If you came to him on his terms, broken and contrite, in fear of the Lord, called upon his name. See, there are those out there called easy believism devils who say you just need to believe. Just believe. And they, they say that repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Well, no, it's not. Okay? They uh, say that you as a lost person can't have godly sorrow. Well, that's not true. And they say that calling upon the name of the Lord is for the Jews or it's a work. And that the Lord will make you a new creature. See, these easy believers and devils who are working for the Vatican and are Jesuits themselves, okay? Um, they are against scriptural salvation. And they dispute repentance, contrition, calling upon the name of the Lord, and being a new creature in Christ Jesus. See, they're thieves and robbers. They save themselves by just believing. They go up another way. They don't go through the door. See. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Then answered they answered him, We be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not forever. Uh, and the servant abideth not in the house forever. But the son abideth ever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Ye shall be free indeed. Look at verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There's only, brother, thank you, there is only one thing that is needful for you, my friend, to be, be broken free of that. Doesn't mean that he's going to physically deliver you from it. 
But see, if you come to him broken and contrite and in fear of him, call upon his name and ask him to save you, and he save you. He comes into you. He seals you with himself. You know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, okay? He seals you with himself. You're once saved, always saved. You have God within you, the circumcision made without hands. He will set you free from the bondage of this world. Doesn't mean you're going to be sinless. Of course not. But true freedom from the oppression of propaganda, from Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order, is salvation in Jesus Christ. Verse 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verses 1 on verse 11. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, see, Catholics are Satanists, by the way. They tell you that God is is one God that consists of three persons. A person is a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay? God has a spirit, the Holy Ghost. God has a soul, the Father. God has a body, which is the Word made flesh. Spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. What does that mean? We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? The Trinity is satanic blasphemy. You know, you you lost people who are like, well, I don't understand the Trinity. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to because the Trinity is satanic. The Trinity is not taught in the scriptures. The Godhead, which is spirit, soul, and body, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, okay? Trinity, one God, three persons, no. One God consisting of spirit, soul, and body, okay? It's very simple. But see, Catholicism wants to confuse you. Verse 7, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me, has seen the Father. Very simple. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the soul of the Godhead? Okay? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. See, the things that our Lord Jesus Christ was speaking did not derive or come from his flesh because the flesh profiteth nothing. Remember, 
Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. Okay? The Word made flesh. Okay? So when he was speaking, it was the Father, the soul of the Godhead, speaking through the Word. Okay? Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? Remember, the flesh profiteth nothing. And remember too, Catholics are all about flesh. Okay? But look at the look at the news, look at the, the TV, look at the movies, look at the video games. Okay? It's all about flesh to them. Why? Because it's derived from Satan, who is a fan of man, who savoreth the things that be of men and not of God. Okay? Verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. And verses 15 through 18 in John 14. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Spirit of truth. Talking about the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now go to John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And John chapter 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I, I will send him unto you. He just said that he proceeds from the Father. But I will send him unto you. That's because Jesus Christ is the Father. See. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Pay attention to this. When God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you, what is he going to do? And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment, of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have many I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he the spirit is come, uh, howbeit when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. And there it is. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine. And shall shew it unto you. And as I have made reference, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse seventeen. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty.
You want to be freed from the bondage of this world? You want to be freed from Satan's grasp? Want to be free? Come to our Lord Jesus Christ. You're not good. You can't save yourself. There will be a link in the description of this video where you and I will once again talk to one another about salvation. Let us reason together, you and I. Okay? This is here more along, more reasons to inform you of what your the answer to the propaganda is. The ultimate answer is salvation in our Lord Jesus Christ. He is your answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. And once he comes into you, seals you until the day of redemption, which is the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. See, with the Lord in you, dear friend, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, Verse 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. How is your mind sound when it's being messed up with all this propaganda given to you by the Jesuit order? Hmm? What is the answer? Jesus Christ is the answer, dear friend. Please take these things seriously. Please remember, you know, watch, watch the first video, which will be linked in the description box of this, and this one will be linked in the description box of the other video. Please keep in mind, Satan, after we get taken out, is going to be set up to rule this world. And the one setting him up is the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuit Order. And right now, you are being dumbed down and kept in submission under Satan. Through the media, through Hollywood, through video games, through music, through pharmacy drugs, through psychological operations. You're hooked. And then you got these truthers telling you facts about this, but not giving you the answers. Your answer is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And brethren, excuse me, people, the brethren who are of the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters. We already know this. When our Lord comes on to you, into you, and saves you, he will guide you into all truth. And he will guide you onto the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. And he will teach you the truth through the word. Okay? Through the word. The written scriptures, the authorized version. This, this, our Lord will use to teach you of himself and will teach you and open your eyes onto the reality of what is going out there, on, out there, through the scriptures. This is your key to sanity. This is your key to freedom. Because you learn of who the Lord is through the scriptures. Not by your feelings, not by emotions. Please consider these things and take them to heart. If you have questions, get a hold of me via email. Time is running out, people. <laughs> now to take your uh, take a gun and shoot that uh, television of yours, or at least turn it off. 
that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope this helps some of you. Please consider these things. And now to our brethren, the Church of the Living God, who has helped us and been there for us. Thank you. We pray for you every day. Thank you for your prayers. He has heard them and, I, and, and has answered your prayers. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We'll see you in the next video.